This week on Hands On Macintosh, aliases, what are they good for? Hands On Mac comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether they're working in the office or remotely, visit LastPass.com slash Twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Mac is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Visit itpro.tv slash twit for an additional 30% off for the lifetime of your active consumer subscription. Use the code TWIT30 at checkout. Hi, everybody. Leo Laporte here. Welcome to Hands on Mac, an inside look at some of the stuff that goes on inside your uh, Macintosh computer. This one actually comes uh, from a question my wife, Lisa, asked me. She said, would you please explain how aliases work? She's come from the Windows work side, and uh, she's used to shortcuts in Windows, but it's a little different on the Macintosh, and it's also really useful if you understand aliases. So let's, let's talk about that. Aliases, we'll also talk about the command line version, soft links, and even hard links. So let's start with the basically aliases from the Finder. I'm going to pull up my Finder here. And the easiest way, we're, let's start by creating a file. I'm in text edit. This is a very special file. And I'm going to save that. And uh, we're going to put that actually in my uh, demo folder here so that I can keep track of where I put it here. And I'm going to say special file. Call that. OK. So there we go. So now I have two files in my demo folder, actually two items in my demo folder. I have a folder called my special stuff and a file called my special file. Easiest way to create bookmarks, or I'm sorry, aliases without doing anything is just command option drag. So I'm holding the command key and the option key down and clicking on this special file. And as I move it, notice the arrow changes into a little curved arrow. That's a hint that you are creating an alias. So there's two ways to make the alias. There's the dragging method, which works pretty well. There's also make alias from the pop-up menu. If you command click or right click the icon and make alias. And it added the two here because there's already one with that name in here. But notice if I make an alias by dragging into a folder where there isn't a file with that name special file, it won't rename it. It'll have the original name, but it will have that special icon. And if I get info on this file, zoom out so we can see that, you'll see it indicates that it's an alias in the same way the icon indicates. And it says it's an alias. But it also says where the original is, because an alias, again, is just a shortcut. And notice it's not even a very big shortcut. It's only 4K. It's tiny. And I can actually point it to a different original. So if I have another copy of this file or I decide I don't want that alias to point to that file anymore, I can actually reassign it, give it a new location. Aliases are very handy because you don't have to have a file in just one place. If I make an alias, as this is, and I, and I uh, put it somewhere, it can act just like that's the original file. It'll show up in searches. It'll show up uh, when I try to open files. It's a really handy way of, of, of finding, of, of putting a file in a variety of different places. And that's the whole point of the alias. Now, a couple of extra things to understand about aliases. I just deleted the original. I still have the alias to the original. It even shows the contents. But if I double click it, it'll say, well, you can't open that. You just put it in the trash. OK, let's empty the trash to see what happens, right? So now there's no copy of that file anywhere. I'm going to erase the items in the trash. Let's go back to my special stuff. This alias no longer points to anything on the hard drive. It doesn't show the contents anymore. It says it's an alias, but if I get info on it, it will say, you know, that original that you uh, you pointed to? Actually, it does show that where it is, but it's uh, it's gone now. So <laughs> this is what used to be there, and now you might want to select a new original because the uh, uh, 
initial file that this points to is gone. Again, if I double click it, it'll say, no, what are you talking about? It's, it's gone. And here's your opportunity to either delete the alias because it no longer points to the original or fix it by pointing it to another file. So let's get rid of those aliases and show you how it works in the command line. You know I'm a big fan of the command line. So now I'm on the command line. And I can do the same thing with the ln command. So to make an alias, I say ln and I say dash s. That's a soft link. ln stands for link. And I'm going to make a soft link to a file. Now I'm going to make a new one. This is my new special file. Uh, let's save that into the demo folder as we did before. New special file. And there we go. So that file is right here. And I can even see the contents of it right there. I can also see it here. So in fact, let's let's uh, show you what's going on here real quickly. If I go into the demo folder and I get a listing, I can see new special file is there. It's a RTF file created by TextEdit. I can now make a link with LN. And there's two kinds of links. There's soft links and hard links. The Macintosh alias is basically a so in fact, it's almost identical to a soft link. So I can say link new special file. By the way, because there's spaces in the file name, it uses those backslashes to do something called escape them so it doesn't confuse the, uh, the operating system, thinking there are multiple commands on the line. And I'm going to put this in, and I'm going to make it be link to new special file. I'm going to just call it that. So now if I look here, I've got another alias. Look at that. In fact, this alias looks exactly like a regular alias with the, the arrow and everything. And if I, uh, if I preview the contents of it, they contain the same thing, right? So LN created basically a Macintosh alias. There's one little difference. Let's make a regular Macintosh alias, and I'll show you the, the little difference and why you, oh, that's a duplicate. Didn't mean to do that. Why you might want to make a, a, a link rather than an alias. You see our alias of the new special file is 968 bytes. The link is only 20 bytes. Now that's not a lot of space. It's not something you have to worry about. But there is a difference between the command line LN and making an alias. And, and part of it is that it's not storing as much stuff in this alias file like icons and so forth. So aliases on the Mac file system, they tend to be a little bit big. That's almost a full K, whereas it's just 20 bytes with an LN. There's one other kind of link that is important to understand, and that's the hard link. We don't we don't use the S at all. We just say LN. And this time, we're going to call it hard link. So now I'm going to make a link that's a hard link, no dash S for soft link, to new special file. Now I have a hard link. Same thing, except it's not showing the contents. But if I double click it, it still opens up that file with the contents. So it looks a little bit different. And notice the size. It's the same size as the original, because a hard link is, in effect, a copy of the file. They share the directory entry, but it's another copy. Hard links are not something you'll typically want to use. You want to use the aliases that Apple provides, both either from the finder or from the command line, as a soft link. But a hard link is something Apple uses in an, in an unusual place. It uses it for Time Machine. This is how Time Machine copies your file. It makes a hard link to the originals, which in effect copies the data. In fact, and this is important, if I delete the original, new special file, and try to open the alias, I'm going to get that error. It's in the trash. But watch what happens if I open the hard link. It opens. Because the hard link is in effect a copy of the file. So that's why Time Machine works 
because it's making a copy, but it does it in an unusual way using hard links. Hard links are kind of a specialty feature of Unix-style operating systems. I wouldn't worry about them too much. It's nice to know about the ln-s syntax. It's a very quick way to make a command line version of your file. But uh, it's not, uh, not something you're going to use a lot if you can just do it in the Finder, if you like to live in the Finder. So let me delete the relocated items. There's a hard link of the original. There's a link to the original, a soft link. There's the original file, and here's an alias. Now, this is a copy, but I don't want that. <laughs> there's an alias. There's the original. There's a soft link. There's a hard link. The hard link persists even if we delete everything else. The file is still there. Soft links and aliases, if you delete the original, no longer know what to point to and we'll give you an error message. So that's the ins and outs of creating aliases. The key with aliases is, and I think this is really important, it's one of the things that's missing on the iPhone. When you create, uh, when you have a file on the iPhone, it can exist in one place exactly, one and only one place, which means, for instance, if you put something in a folder, that's the only place that that app can exist. Soft links and aliases mean a link to the original can exist in a lot of places. You can take your applications, for instance, if you use them a lot, and make a, uh, a, a duplicate on the desktop. Let's say you launch the Brave browser a lot. All I have to do is command copy the Brave browser to the desktop. I'm not copying the whole thing. In fact, as you can see, it's not nearly as big as the original Brave browser. It's just 4K on disk, 788 bytes. But if I double click that, it launches the Brave browser because it's a alias. So this is a really handy way to, to put files or applications or folders even in multiple places on your system so they're easily accessed. Actually, that's exactly how the dock works. These aren't originals. These are aliases to the original applications that are just stored in a special area of the system called the dock. There's a very big difference between the Brave browser on the desktop that's an alias and the Brave browser in my applications folder that's the original. If you throw out the alias, the original persists. If you throw out the original, the alias no longer does anything. I hope that makes sense to you. And I hope you see how useful that can be because you can keep multiple links to a file anywhere you want. In fact, if you want to use hard links, you can even use multi have multiple copies of a file anywhere you want. Uh, be careful, though, because that's a good way to fill up your hard drive pretty darn quickly. Our show today brought to you by IT Pro TV. If you're interested in an IT career but you're not sure which one's the right for you, IT Pro TV can help. Sign up for a premium membership and let an expert guide you. With over 4,000 hours of IT training, you can get the certifications you need to get a great job in IT. Go to itpro.tv slash twit and use the code twit30 for an additional 30% off as long as you stay active. That's itpro.tv slash twit. Don't forget the offer code twit30. IT Pro TV. Build or expand your IT career and enjoy the journey. Well, I hope I didn't confuse you, but that's what aliases are for. Lisa, I hope you, <laughs> I hope you understood that. They're really useful if you want to uh, put an alias to an application, for instance, somewhere easier to access. Just remember, an alias can be deleted harmlessly. An application can't. If you delete the application, the alias won't work anymore. If you delete the alias, the application's still there. They're easy to make. They don't cost a lot. They don't occupy a lot of disk space. But they really can help you navigate your Macintosh better. Thanks for watching. I'll be back next Friday. We're going to talk about voice dictation on Hands On Mac. Check out other shows here on Twit TV, including my show, Hands On Photography. On this show, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your camera, as well as be a better post processor. So head on over to twit.tv slash hop and subscribe now.